Jamie Oliver's Ministry of Food is coming to Australia to educate us and inspire us with good healthy food. I want to show Jamie that the food revolution has already started in Australia. Today I'm going to teach you a quick, simple, really yummy dish. Your mission, I want you to cook this dish, take a photo of you holding up the finished product and post it on our Facebook page. If you're not on Facebook, you can email it to us at masterchefreject at gmail.com. And if you want to take it a little bit further, you can video yourself cooking the recipe and share it with us. The most crucial part of this mission, you need to pass this on. This is like the cooking equivalent of a chain letter. You can share this video on your Facebook page with your family and friends. Uh, better still, make a night of it and teach a couple of people this, this dish in your kitchen. Okay. The dish I'm cooking today is Jeremy's Asian Spaghetti Dish and this is a genuine pass it on recipe. My ex-boyfriend Luke's friend Jeremy taught him this recipe. Uh, this is actually the piece of paper that Luke wrote all the ingredients on and we had this uh, stuck on our fridge for uh, years. I don't want to. Oh shit, this has got fish sauce in it, I forgot. Okay, the first thing to do is to put the water on. I always forget how long it takes to boil water. It's a simple thing. Make sure you've got plenty of water and plenty of salt. Saxa salt is perfectly fine for this purpose. Um, I, I do have some sea salt that I use when I'm dressing salads. Um, just use whatever salt you have at hand. Now, very important. Make sure you get a glass of nice red wine. Ginny. What? It's not like you've been showing much restraint in this area lately. So, uh, I've got about two small shallots here, which are these uh, onions, uh, French shallots. Um, some people call them spring onions. Uh, you They're can find. That's not a spring onion. You said you call them spring onions. That's not spring onion. Well, you said you call them spring onions. Spring onions, those long, the cream things that look like chives. They're called eschalots. They're called spring onions. <sighs> You're interrupting. The first thing you want to do is chop your ingredients. Uh, I've chopped a couple of shallots. Uh, if you don't have these, uh, half a red onion or half a brown onion is perfectly fine if you're feeding two people. Uh, two small cloves of garlic, uh, finely chopped, and coriander. Uh, if you can, try to get coriander with the roots still attached. Uh, you want to use as much of this stem as possible, so uh, give it a really good rinse. As you can see, there's lots of, of dirt trapped in there. And then finely chop, uh, you know, a good few centimetres of the, the stem. We also want to use the leaves. Uh, now you can spend a good 20 minutes carefully picking off each of these leaves. Um, but I prefer just to uh, grab a knife and or just roughly chop this up. The most important ingredient, well at least one of them, kaffir lime leaves. Now these are available nowadays at most local supermarkets. Uh, if you can't find it at your Coles or your Safeway, a good fruit and vegetable store will have these. Uh, they're slightly annoying to chop finely because they're leaf-like and a bit crunchy. Uh, but all you need to do is just tear each half away from the hard stem. And then you need a good knife for this. Just carefully and finely chop the leaves. Until it comes apart. <laughs> I usually use three of these. And I'm just going to do my tearing method away from the centre because that's how I like to do it. This is slightly annoying but please don't leave this bit out because the flavour of the kaffir lime leaves is really, really important and it's one of the most fabulous things about this dish. 
Other ingredients that we need to have on standby are uh, tuna. This is a 185 gram tin, enough for two people. Uh, Sirena tuna, it's a really good quality brand you can get in the supermarket. I like to get it in spring water. If you want to get it in oil, you know, it's up to you. Uh, also, uh, chili paste. You need to get this at an Asian grocery store, but it's really common, it's really cheap. It's chili paste with soya bean oil. And uh, this is a really common brand if you can commit this uh, jar design to memory. Um, lastly, frozen peas. Uh, you know, what can I say about frozen peas that hasn't been said before? Your water should be boiling by now. Mine isn't, and that's because... The, the majority of sensible human beings would have used boiled water. Well, also, I forgot to put a lid on it, which is more to the point. Usually, if you were going to boil a large amount of water, it would be sensible if you put... Uh, Boiling water? <laughs> First, please. Well, yeah, you could boil the kettle, but what if people don't have a kettle? Well, they're probably hobos and they're not going to be watching an internet cooking thing. People out. have stovetop kettles. Anyway, I was, I do admit, I, I have made a slight error. This water would have boiled a lot quicker if I had put this lid on it. So, we'll uh, come back when that's boiled. Ow! Okay, we're up to the exciting bit. My water is boiling, finally. I've got a wok here, which I'm going to turn on. If you don't have a wok, don't worry, just use whatever frying pan you have at home. If you do have a wok, just put it onto a medium heat. You don't need this, you know, scorching hot for this recipe. Uh, we don't want the garlic to burn to a crisp as soon as it's put in. Uh, so I'm gonna use macadamia oil. It's got a high smoking point, really healthy for you. You can get it in the supermarkets. I'm going to put just one lug of that in. While that's heating, I'll get ready to put the pasta in. I want to use an angel hair pasta or as fine as spaghetti you can get. Barilla is absolutely fine to use. It's a good quality supermarket pasta. If I was doing this for a special occasion, I might use a bit of a fancier dried pasta. You could even go for the royalty of dried pasta, which is Di Martelli. And it's a little bit more expensive, but you can really taste the difference. This pasta, because it's quite fine, only takes five minutes to cook, so you Many can... Maybe the final alarm will go off. Sorry? The final alarm will go off, the smoke alarm will Well, the... that's not my fault. Okay, okay. All right, onion. Garlic. Caffeine lime. Now my wok is smoking quite a bit, but that's because Derek seasoned it only half an hour ago. So it's got quite a bit of oil in it already. Uh, so just move your garlic and onion around. There we are, it's settling down a little bit. Next is this chili paste. Now you want to put a big, that's about a dessert spoon or a tablespoon. You don't have to be absolutely exact. Just give this a bit of a stir around to break it up and it'll start melting into the onion and garlic. We'll also throw in coriander root and time to put the tuna in as well. I've drained that already of most of the liquid. Uh, now it's time for the lime juice. I have this fantastic invention here which I couldn't live without. If you don't have one of these, just stick a fork in the line and squeeze it over that. I'm putting a 
whole one in and just a good you know that's about two tablespoons of fish sauce I reckon the pasta's only got a minute to go so it's time to add our frozen peas we want about a cup of frozen peas this is oops and a lot of those just went on the floor you can turn this down to a lower heat it's a bit harder for me to control the heat on the the camp cooker that i've got but you'll be able to do this a lot more efficiently on your stove so the peas are just going to take about one minute to cook the pasta will be ready and then we'll drain it and toss it through the sauce Okay, so I've drained my pasta and peas. Uh, just toss it into the pan or the wok. Keep the heat on while you mix this in with the sauce. Uh, the heat helps the sauce stick to the spaghetti. So actually your tongs are gonna be a better complement for this. It's like gas on. Sorry? It's like gas on. Yeah, the gas is on. Is it? Yes. Is it? Uh. Okay. Okay, it's time to plate up. Oh. Now, Derek has taught me a way of doing this. Twist. Put it under the plate and twist. Oh, you're uh, Sorry. Look, it doesn't matter how you plate it up. Just get it on the plate. Okay, I'm just going to finish off with a squeeze, decent squeeze of lime. Some sprinkling of coriander. And season it with a little bit of salt, pepper. And that's it. Now it's your turn. We're going to list the ingredients for you now so you can write them down and make your shopping list. If you have any questions or need my help, you can contact me on the Facebook page or via email. And remember, please share this, pass it on, upload your photos and be part of the food revolution. For Jeremy's Asian spaghetti, you'll need two shallots. Or if you can't get shallots, use half a brown or a red onion, two cloves of garlic, a bunch of coriander, three kaffir lime leaves, two limes, one cup of frozen peas, chilli paste from the Asian grocer, fish sauce, one 185 gram tin of tuna, macadamia oil or a vegetable oil or peanut oil will do if you can't get macadamia oil, salt, pepper. Happy cooking! Stupid forgot to tell you that you need pasta as well, so allow 100 grams per pair.